Aloha. Today's episode is brought to you by the Western Extension Risk Management Education Center, USDA NIFA, and the University of Hawaii College of Tropical Ag and Human Resources and the Livestock Extension Group, as well as the University of Nebraska-Lincoln Center for Ag Profitability. Aloha. Welcome to the Livestock Vala'au, a podcast aimed to provide educational support, information, guidance, and outreach to our livestock stakeholders in Hawaii and the U.S. We are your hosts, Mele Oshiro and... Shannon Sam. So today we're going to be talking with our very own Melalani Oshiro, Livestock Agent for Hawaii County. She's going to be speaking to us about livestock production and then tools for pasture production and health. So it's going to be an exciting one. Buckle up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. No. <laughs> yeah. So just some tools. I think, you know, when we talk about our pastures, and mm-hmm. all our animals that are grazing and all those those fun guys out there, you know, kind of some tools and things that we need to consider when you're considering getting or raising or if you are currently raising grazing animals, you know, things that you can consider some tools that can help you um, yeah. either manage your pastures, manage the health of your pastures, identify where things are going wrong, and even to identify them before they start to go wrong, right, and putting those tools into use. So. We are going to just go through a little bit of those tools that you can use to help in your pasture production and monitoring the health of them. And, you know, I think the first things whenever you think about pasture, it, whether you're new to it or not, or you're just wanting to find more information is really to think about why, why should you care about yeah. the health of your pastures? You know, well, we all should care about the health of our pastures, particularly if you are raising, um, grazing animals that rely on those forages and those um, grasses and plants that are in there, right? The productivity of those things are going to be one of the main reasons why you care, right? Not just how well they're producing and then also how well they sustain their ability to continue producing. In well, yeah. And there's been parts of, of the U.S. a good bit of, you know, the the Midwest, the Mid Plains and part of the West have been in drought conditions. Parts of Hawaii County uh, oh, yeah. have been D2, I think. I don't know how long they've been, but like, you know, so it's like, you know, that all goes into that too, right? Uh, It definitely does, you know, and how well you can maintain the productivity and sustain those pastures and the forages that are in there you help to prolong those the life of them right and the 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 health of them how long they stay there and how the quality of them as well right yeah. and then it's not just the individual plants that benefit from those things or your animals that consume the plants but the whole environment as well right and the environmental stewardship that you provide by being um, a good steward of the land that you're grazing maintaining that productivity maintaining the the um, the plants that are there you know you help to maintain the stewardship on that land as well and then entire watershed that you're sort of sitting in right it all will trickle down in two things so it's not just um a one one thing that you that really gets the benefit of you right here and caring about what's there right so your animals will benefit you will benefit as a producer um your lands around you benefit as well so you know you that's the important part of um why we should care about how well our pastures are producing for us and our grazing animals absolutely so, you know, we look at sort of things in there as far as like, what are the risk factors, you know, in mm-hmm. pasture production? And we have a lot of risk factors. I was going to um, say, yeah, there's a bunch out there because there's invasives. There's all yeah. kinds of stuff. This is definitely not an extensive Drought. list. Yeah. <laughs> More so of the ones that kind of float to the top of the bucket. Right. Um, and one of the big things of risk factors we can have is just management. Right. Not having the labor to um, enough to go out there to do the things that's that been we a need challenge. to do. I think too within the U.S. in general I was like finding labor whether that's you or your family or like even just hired labor it's it's been yeah and a consistent um force of labor right and so yeah it's a matter of you know you, you have to take the time to train a new person that's out there in the production system that you're in um so maintaining that that labor force that's in there um that's a you know one of the factors that we um, have to think about and weather, as Shan has mentioned, you know, we don't have control over those types of things. We don't No. Um, and so unfortunately, but it, it is something that we can look ahead and say, OK, well, this is a weather um situation that we can proactively think about drought is the biggest one right that we typically um we either don't have enough water we can get too much of it (laughs) so 
you kind of think on both both ends of the stick, right? And yeah. try to think about those different strategies that you can use um, to deal with those types of things. And, right. you know, so those are some of the risk factors. The other thing Shannon mentioned as well is our invasives, right? Pests are disease that can come in um, and impact the plants in our pastures and, um, you know, in turn impact our grazing animals in those pastures. So and another big financial or big risk is financials, right? And those yeah. impacts that it has just on your cash flows and or if you're having to deal with one thing, whether it's a weather incident um, or a pest and disease incident, you know, um, all it those types it. of factors. So this is not an extensive list of risk, risk factors, <laughs> that's for sure. I like that you said that at least two or three times. You really Definitely tried to hammer that, that off. Extensive. But it's <laughs> things, it is things that um, will has over yeah. the years floated to the top of the bucket like I said and things that and finance in the last couple of years would be I mean it's always been a big one but like with inflation and the input costs rising so much yeah. you know yeah. it's definitely one that I I mean I'm very biased right yeah. <laughs> but that's, and I'm sure like that's and Shannon with you folks in the Midwest and stuff you probably do have pests and disease that come in there but we Absolutely. You know, we here in Hawaii everything likes to grow everything likes to survive so when yeah. we get things in we have a very hard time getting them out or you know, I know and we have to sort of find and deal with how they're gonna respond to our climates here so yeah. these are risk factors to keep in the mind right and so Absolutely. we're gonna sort of talk about some things and tools that um, can help with some of these risk factors, right? And these tools that's that they're going to be able to address, or at least put some tools out there and things for you to think about that could help in those areas. So first of all, why pasture management? Why, right? Why do we do this? Um, why? Well, to have a grazing plan, right? Um, there, you, your pastures. If you're grazing animals, is a critical resource. If you're grass finishing animals, particularly, it's a critical resource. It's expensive here in Hawaii to import feed, um, in, and you know we don't have access to some of the other resources, um, that y'all in the states have, Shannon, and I, you know, would sometimes get jealous. Yeah, but even then, feed is still expensive. It's still expensive. <laughs> so, so you know, yeah, well, it's pasture management where y'all live, but yeah, yeah it's, it's important so we can sustain those pastures right? Continue having them producing for us, you know, and reduce those feed costs, maintaining our livestock and keeping them healthy as well. That's another very important reason why you want to manage your pastures. Yep. And then the other one on the end there, you know, is our finances, right? If we don't manage your pastures, right, you're going to end up having more inputs if you're raising grazing animals. Because if you don't got the grass or forages for them to graze, you're going to have to bring it in somewhere and you're going to be yeah. supplementally, supplementally feeding them. Mm -hmm. tongue twisted here but um you know so that's that those are just a few reasons that, that you know why pasture management is a very important part of um your production system it's a big one it's a big one you know and All i think big ones. in your plan when you think about your grazing plan i think one of the the big things to understand is basically looking at what you have and understanding what healthy versus unhealthy looks like, right? Even same with animals, right? And you're raising animals, knowing what a healthy animal looks like and what an unhealthy animal looks like. Um, in pasture, we can, in pasture production, I should say, or pasture management, we can have some sort of um, objective matters that we can use to identify things, right? One is looking at productivity of our pastures, right? So how much dry matter of mm -hmm. forage is being produced um, over a certain amount of acreage, right? And then we look at that production over a period of time. So is it sustaining that period of production over that period of time? Um, and then how, you know, what's the soils looking like? All those types of things. Yeah, look at that productivity. Then we also look at sort of the usable forage. So you might have tons and tons of forage, tons and tons of plants in your pasture. What is but it good? Are they good, right? Are your animals going to eat them? Are they going to give them the nutritional, uh, meet those nutritional requirements um, that they, they need for growth? You know, are they going to meet the protein requirements they need for growth? So what's the quality of the forage that's in there? And then is it palatable, right? Are they going to eat that? Are they going to, um, you know, there are certain plants, definitely your, your animals are going to love Don't more than others. Yeah. yeah. You know, they're going to go to first, right? So looking at that vegetative community that's in there, right? And the, sometimes the more diverse your plants are in there as long as they're good quality forages and forages that your animals can use, that's a better option. You know, you give them good diversity, they'll, they'll tend not to just kind of um, pick and choose those little, what we call ice cream plants in the pasture and the stuff. Ice that cream like, plants. I like right? that. I don't think I've heard that before. Yeah. So like that's that. what I've heard it referred to is before, you know, that's where they're going to go like otherwise. So 
you know, nice. looking at use, looking at then what's the usable mm -hmm. forage, right? And then the other thing we can look at to identify if our pastures are healthy or not and being productive is how well are your animals doing, right? Don't just forget to, don't just look at your pastures, but look at how well your animals are performing. Are they gaining on the daily? What's their average daily gains? What's their body condition looks like? Um, you know, and that's going to differ depending on the class of animals that you have, mm -hmm. whether you have sheep, you have goats, do you have young goats in there? You have lactating goats in there. Um, um, you know, or even beef cattle, what are you looking at? Are you raising yeah. beef cattle, dairy cattle? What, you know, what's the class of animals? So understanding all those types of things and what, you know, what sort of those goals and um, thresholds they should be meeting at certain points in their, in their growth, um, understanding mm -hmm. those types of things or whatever stage you're, you know, whether you're doing cow calf or whatnot, um, understanding that animal's performance in those pastures and how you can evaluate them to see and how that's going to reflect back to what your pastures are being, are they healthy or are they unhealthy? Yeah. So I so, do have a question really quick about yeah. the plan. Do you have to do this plan on your own? Are there like resources available for this? Like to, can you go to NRCS? Can you yeah. Like, yeah, go sure, to your local could. like and extension educator or agent and ask them to help you with some of these things or are you trying to tell me to have everybody call me to help you with your grazing plan? No, I'm just kidding. No. Yes. I was trying to refer them to NRCS <laughs> if NRCS would yeah. do it. <laughs> no, NRCS works with you definitely. Yes. And you can work with them to get plans and you know, um, they're in a sense uh, but your your extension educators as well, like your extension agents around the county also can help you. We have our passion range specialists in um Hawaii County that can also help, you know, and we do put on workshops quite often on how to you know, these, um, work on a grazing, uh, management or pasture management plan. Um, and I think some of the things you need to come with to anybody who's going to help you, whether it's NRCS or extension, the important things to come with us is one, what are you grazing? How, you know, what's the acreage you have that you're grazing, where you're grazing. Um, and if you can identify plants in the area that you're grazing, wonderful. But if you can at least tell us, where you are on the island that's and how better. much acreage you have and then what you're going to be raising or what you are raising that's at least helpful because we can kind of know what the climates and what what area is and you know what kind of rainfall you're going to get sort of what common plants are in those areas and whatnot so though having that that base information to come to us that's very very helpful, helpful. Um, you don't need to have soil reports and soil testing done and all the kind of stuff prior to coming to us. It's better for you to just call and just say, Hey, I got, you know, this is what I have. This is where I am. This is what, what I want. What do I need to do? Yeah. yeah. You know, and go have a conversation about it before spending money on, you know, a lot of folks will do soil testing and all that stuff. And maybe you didn't really need to do it ahead of time. You know, you could have maybe come in and talk first and spend that, um, spend that resources somewhere else. So, Definitely. There's other people outside of extension that can help you with a grazing management yeah. for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of things then impacts your pasture mm -hmm. health, right? Management, obviously, as we're talking about it, that's a big one. That's going to, you know, your grazing plan, the amount of labor you have, all those kinds of things can impact your pasture health, right? Because if you don't have a grazing plan, you're not going to be able to know how many, t how many days you had in an an animals in a certain area, how much animals that a certain area can support, um, even understanding what plants are in that area that is, is it going to support the animals that you're putting on there? So um, it doesn't definitely on the management stand it does have an impact on your pasture health weather definitely has an impact as well you know not enough moisture out there will can deter either, and not so much deter and change the quality but just change the production level and per, um, forage productivity in those areas if you don't have enough precipitation mm -hmm. storms now if we have the opposite end and we've got too much water um, that can also impact, right? Yeah. Um, you know, weather can also cause fires, you know, and we get really dry areas. Um, oh, yeah. Fires, fires that come through will definitely damage and impact your pasture health. Um, mm -hmm. And the last, you know, not the last thing, but one of the other things on our list here is pest and disease, right? Mm -hmm. Anytime you're dealing with invasive plants, um, fireweed is one, palm of cunny, blackberry, all those weeds can impact your pasture health because they reduce the amount of grazable area that you can have for desirable forages that are there. Um, and, you know, impacts that we get from these invasive insects, such as our two-line yeah. spittlebug or other animals out there, deer, you know, hogs turning over 
the land, deer taking out the desire desirable forages down to the point where they are not able to recover. And then we have the undesirable weeds that come in, right? Similar aspects happen with two line spittle bug when they take out those desirable forages, those areas that get impacted. Um, now we see those weedy species come back and some weeds are going to have some toxicity to our grazing animals like the fireweed does. Um, others will just take up take up area that now our desirable forages are not able to come back in those areas. So there's definite impacts to pasture health um, in those different areas of management and your weather yeah. or plants and disease that can have that impact wow. to the health of your pasture. That's amazing. So, yeah, you know, it, and it's, it's, it's hard because pasture, when you're talking about grazing in pastures and your grazing management plan is not going to look the same for everybody. Um, it's, it's, I should say it's definitely not going to look the same for everybody because it really depends on what you're raising, but these are sort of the basis of where you can start, um, to kind of build a pond and, you know, expand what you need and what mm -hmm. you don't need. Right. There's lots of tools out there that you can use for monitoring um, your pastures and the healthier pastures, you know, and these are just some that I kind of picked out because I think one, they they have great use across any area. Um, some are just easier to use and some have been had some, you know, we've got some feedback about some of the other tools that are going to mention that people folks like, you know, in the, in the larger areas or bigger production um systems yeah. that they have to use. So I think one of the easiest ones is just photo monitoring. You know, it's pretty simple. Um, it can show you some short or long-term changes in your pasture and the condition and some species abundance, sort of how much ground cover erosion or maybe drought impact that you had. Um, also show you some of the maybe problem areas Mm -hmm. that you have so photo monitoring is pretty simple i mean it is exactly what it is it's monitoring with photos almost all of us have a smartphone these days um and taking a photo at the same yeah. point in every pasture or whatever pasture you're monitoring um taking it at the same point and even if you can do it at the same time of day that really helps oh that would be really yeah i was gonna say because i was like i think the key is you have to take it at the same general same point like you said same yeah pair. Yeah. So some people will like, put in like some people will put in a, a a fence post or something and we'll mark sort of the oh, direction. That's a smart idea. Yeah, the direction that you took the picture or um or use a landmark in your pasture to keep it simple for yourself, whether it's right into the gate, um, 10 feet into the gate at a certain direction, you know, if you've got a tree or something, keep it simple is what I what I always say, because then you're more likely to actually do it. Um, and what we do is take a straight photo, um, sort of on the lens um, horizon, yeah. right? And then another one straight down looking at the ground cover just below you. And if you have those vegetation hoops or loops, if you don't know what they are, we'll put a link to what they are. Um, but if you had those little circle, those little rings, putting them on the ground and taking a picture straight in front of you um, is another good one because then you can sort of see the ground cover and types of um, plants and the species that you have there and just kind of see those changes over time. So photo monitoring is good. There's plenty of different ways to do it. That's just kind of a simple way to do it. I think I've heard of um, the photo monitoring, but I hadn't heard of the loop idea, but that's a good idea. Yeah. So and and those loops that you use when you do like grazing samples, that's exactly. how I, oh, pasture samples. So yeah, yeah. I think it just gives you sort of a reference of what to that's look at idea. because sometimes if you just get a picture of the ground, you don't really, you can't really tell the height of things looking straight down. You look mostly looking at species, like kind the of, different yeah. species. But, um, you know, if you put something down in the ground, it's just, you know, kind of relevance, uh, reference to, you know, something else in the, in the image. So the other thing is like we're talking about the vegetation hoops is forage production, right? So that's the actual physical yeah. measurement of the dry matter production per acre. Um, you determine that by taking a small clipping of forage um, across the grazing areas and depending on how large your pasture, your grazing area is, well, that'll kind of dictate how many different clippings you'd have to take. And then using a calculation, you can figure out the amount of dry matter production that's in that uh, area per acre and use that to sort of manage um, you can use that to build your grazing plan because it'll tell you how much dry matter is available for the animals to graze in that area and figure out your stocking densities. That's important. You can yeah. look at that to measure um, changes over time um, in your for pasture production, you know, in that particular mm -hmm. area. 
So the other one that's kind of similar is, well, not similar, but it looks at um, forage production is grazing uh, cages, right? So they're small fenced enclosure animals that animals can, are unable to graze. Oh and yeah. So I saw one of those. We, yeah. so I'm part of the ranch practicum here in Nebraska, which if you're a local rancher or someone in actually a lot of people in the surrounding states take it as well. So it's like a six month course, but it's, they, I I saw one of those recently. Sorry for interrupting, but no. I think it was really neat because they had it like fenced yeah. off and then the cows were all around and we were out at the yeah. Good Medicine Laboratory. So yeah, it was really neat. Yeah. And so you'll see them every so often too, in lots of um, some of the passion areas and you just, they're an exposure. So you can go ahead and look at sort of plant composition and then production over really time. Neat. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a good, it's a good way, you know, to kind of measure what kind of impact is going into your grazing areas. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last one, of course, there's always an app for everything. Um, and there's software that goes with those apps. <laughs> there's an app for everything now. Almost <laughs> There is right, but um, you know, and some of the programs you have to have a subscription, other ones are free. So, some of the ones yeah. that I've seen and I've um messed around with a little bit is Pasture Map. Um, the other one is Maya Grazing. There's mm -hmm. also a Grass Snap um app, and I like pa you know, Pasture Map was one that I kind of was like, wow, that's pretty cool because you map out the areas um of your grazing areas and oh. then it sort of color codes like when you've moved in animals or a group of herd, herd out it'll change the color of that so you'll kind of see it's red and then when it starts to get the amount of rest oh. that you've sort of dictated it'll turn back and when it's ready to graze you'll be able to see that it's turned green in your area so and it's That's nice cool. you can add pictures into those different paddock areas um and so you can sort of have that photo monitoring as well which um, is nice that. yeah yeah and it's a, it's a, it does have the software online so you can, you know, multiple people can be entering this. So if you have a large area, they've been around for a while, um, you know, so I know a few producers that are using that pasture map and uh, yeah, so it seems to be quite integrated into different things and um, to provide you some good information. And, you know, these monitoring tools are not just important, I think. The other thing we need to mention, or I want to mention, because Shannon always reminds me that it's not just about the monitoring melee, about the forage and the feed that the animals need and to make sure that yeah. our producers, you know, we can minimize the amount of money you need to spend on buying supplemental feed. But it's when disaster hits, um, yes. when fires come through, when drought comes through and you have to, you have an insurance program or yes. now you can get funding because something's coming up. Um, you have the data to turn around and say, well, this is what we had last year. And now this is yes. what we had because of that incident. Those records are so important. Record part of this. Even if it's just photos now. So again, uh, like the forage and then the damage, the photos, the videos, those are so helpful when filing a disaster claim. Sorry, Melly, go on. <laughs> no, like, Shannon knows awesome. way more about these disaster and record keeping than I do. Like as far as the programs that you can yeah. really benefit from it. But uh, yeah, and anytime you go like even to your FSA office, I mean, we had them on before talking about the records, the record keeping and the record data that you yes. can share with them. The more you can provide to them, sometimes the better they're able to help you or the quicker they're able to help you. Well, and with the new find farm the bill coming out, we actually probably ought to look at having, well, if it gets passed, probably having yeah. several yeah. of them on. Yeah. And there's going to be other programs yeah. coming through um, risk, not RMA, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, RMA through, what is it called? PRF, Pasture Range and Forage. Yeah. Um, so, um, all that stuff. NAP, so. All those I, I don't know that there, I think PRF's available in Hawaii. I don't know the NAP is. So. Nap is. Nap, Nap is. is okay. Yeah. yeah. And then um yeah, and the PRF is coming. That's what I believe. Yeah. So um, be excited. That's a good one. Yeah. So that's a pretty good one. But they like that's why these monitoring tools are not gonna just be good for your oh, man. management plan. Yeah, They're that would be, be really helpful. Useful yeah. data for that too. So absolutely. A very short spiel on pasture management. Um, you you could really talk about pasture management management and grazing plans. I feel like for days because there's so much information. There's so many tools out there. Well, he's gonna say so there's so many aspects. ways to look at it. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly it. I yeah, agree. There's there's a lot of different aspects you can look at pasture management. So this is just uh a quick one. I mean, we, we know you're not going to, we don't want people listening to a podcast about pasture manager for hours. So this no, is a quick you one. we'll put some either. links. Yeah. To some of the other grazing, um, management, uh, 
information that we have and some of the tools that was mentioned um, and some of the apps, you know, that are out there or links to them. But yeah. And, you know, and if you're in Hawaii County, you have questions about pasture. Um, I've had a, you know, a, a few people that reached out and um, to myself or to Dr. Thorne, we're both here to help with our livestock folks. Um, NRCS is also another great resource for them mm-hmm. um, to talk yeah. about grazing. So and if you're in Nebraska, I would recommend you talk to Ben Beckman, Jerry Valeski, Daniel Redfern. There's a whole group of pasture and forage people within the University of Nebraska Lincoln that can really help you with your grazing plans and things like that um, that are localized to your area. And a lot of states have forage specialists, forage and grazing folks. So, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we know we have other people from other states that do listen to it, mm-hmm. to us, <laughs> besides, besides yeah. our two... Res- yeah. So there's a lot of resources out there. I think the first yeah. thing is to go ahead and look at what you what you have. Yeah. Um, what you want to do and how much area you have. Um, start from there. And I think that's um, you know, take that information and and um reach out to someone more than happy to help. So um yeah, I, I think that's it. And yeah. I hope uh that was useful and yeah. yeah. So well. That's good. Thank you for joining us today, Mele. Yeah. We hope our listeners found this informative and that it will be useful to them. Uh, also, if you have not already done so, please be sure to fill out our feedback fest to let us know your thoughts about this podcast, kind of what you want to see us move, uh, move towards, but topics and things you would like to see us cover over the next little bit. So we know what you'd like to hear more of. Yeah. Make sure to follow us on our social media pages, the Livestock Palau, Livestock Extension Group, if you haven't already. And be sure to visit the UHC TAR Extension website and our YouTube channel listed in the show notes. Absolutely. For additional information about this topic, see the show notes of the podcast in the description box of our YouTube page. Thanks for listening to the Livestock Ball Out. And before we go, show some love to your favorite podcast by leaving us a review anywhere you listen to this podcast. And then stay tuned for next month. Yeah. Thanks again to our sponsors, the Western Extension Risk Management Education Center, USD NIFA, the Livestock Extension Group, CTAR, and the University of Nebraska Lincoln Center for Ag Profitability. Mahalo for listening. Aloha.